There's some chairs at the room on the other side. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the European Day of the Day, the European Day of the Day uh, uh, culinary demonstration. Um, this demonstration is organized uh, in frames of a uh, big promotion project, a big international promotion project, uh, which promotes uh, traditional Bulgarian uh, dairy products, which are white wine cheese, kashkaval, and yogurt. Um, yogurt made of um, Atabizilus bulgaricus, it is a start of cal culture which is um, come uh, from Bulgaria. Very famous and very healthy. The nutritionist um, will, uh, will give some proofs about it. Uh, with later, uh, this presentation, this cooking demonstration um, will not take too much of your time. Um, uh, Chef Vicky uh, will, will give you some ideas how to cook uh, and which traditional Bulgarian uh, dishes you can cook or any of the European cuisine dishes you can cook with um, our products. And uh, nutritionist Heidi will, will give you some nutritionist ideas, nutritionist tips about uh, these products which we have promoted. Uh, just a few words about the, about the project itself. We are uh, doing promotion in uh, Emirates and uh, in Australia, in those big cities that you see on the screen, uh, that we provide in uh, Emirates and Sydney and Melbourne, Adelaide in uh, Australia. Uh, we do it through lots of uh, media channels, through advertising in magazines, uh, airports and uh, on television. We participate in exhibitions like this exhibition and uh, we do participate in other exhibitions in Australia and in Um We do presentations uh, of uh, our products for specialists uh, in uh, trade uh, and uh, food industry. Uh, we invite those people which are interested uh, to see the manufacturing places and to uh, make the direct contacts with uh, producers in Bulgaria. We invite them to Bulgaria for a couple of days to see the manufacturing places and uh, to make direct contacts with uh, producers. We also uh, do thematic dinners in which we, uh, in which we prepare dishes uh, including uh, our products. Which we invite as well opinion makers, chefs, bloggers, journalists, and any other people related to the food industry. We do the culinary presentations, demonstrations such as this one, which is by Chef Vicky. The printed materials, advertising materials, everyone will get in the gift sets which were on the chairs. Memories of use. And um, uh, we, uh, we invite you to become our friends on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and uh, check updates on our website. Uh, if you have any other, uh, any other questions uh, regarding the program or the products, uh, ask me when I'm going to be around. Uh, and uh, I'm passing the board to Chef Vicky, which will start. Um, Preparing something, and then, uh, and then uh, Heidi will, will continue with the chef, uh, and you you will get uh, some uh, nutritional tips about the 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 Thank you. Thanks, Andre. Um, okay, my name is Ricky Holt, uh, and I'm here to show you how you can use mulberry cheeses. Uh, the three cheese that, or well, three dairy products that Andre mentioned, the white wine cheese, the cash bar, and the yogurt. Um, the dishes that we will be doing today, the first dish we're going to do is um, called the Benista. Benista. It's a, a classic Bulgarian dish. It's like a pie. It's layers of filo pastry, uh, alternating with a filling of yogurt and white wine cheese uh, in an egg base. Um, Looks delicious. We served it earlier. Was well received. Uh, I think that we could probably take it another step further and maybe add layers of spinach or mushrooms to it, which would be very, very good. So that's the first thing I'm going to make. 
Um, then also with the white brine cheese, we're going to do a watermelon and feta, a white brine cheese, watermelon, olive and mint salad, finished with just a little bit of red onion that's been soaked in some lime juice. This was a little tip from N Nutella Lawson, that the lime juice takes the pungency out of the onion and it also allows the colour to run. Uh, you can see some of those plated up afterwards. And then we'll be using the cash kebab, which is this cheese here, uh, and baking it into a mushroom quiche. I've got the mushrooms on the stove with some roasted garlic and rosemary and thyme. And then finally we are doing a little breakfast parfait with the Bulgarian yogurt, some braised rhubarb and some homemade granola. So, let's make the stuff. Hi, I'm Heidi. I'm a dietitian and nutritionist with Scoop Nutrition. Can you hear me okay? How's that? It's a bit better. Um, so we're going to be working alongside Chef Ricky and talking about the nutritional component of these dairy foods. So cracking eggs, is that right? Cracking eggs. Excuse me. You often add um, eggs with cheese. They're, they're a really good way to sort of add a punch of flavour. Well, omelettes, potatoes. I think there's a long history there, really. So six eggs, uh, 400 grams of yogurt, the Bulgarian yogurt. Season some salt and pepper, whisk together until it's smooth. And then the feta, the white brine cheese. It's like a feta, is that right? It is like it is like a feta, but I believe, I believe the Greeks own feta. All right, the white brine cheese sounds terribly elegant. I think we can all get on board with that. I just need one of those bottles. Okay. Okay. So you've got the yogurt in here and the feta and the white brine cheese. And the white brine cheese, that's right. So you've sort of got a double double dairy wagon. A double, a double dairy. Right, so now we're about to do some tasting. So here I've got a spinach spinach. Just pop a little more cheese in there. So this is actually quite a protein rich dish. I mean, you've got the eggs which are full of protein, but also the dairy, so from the yogurt and the white brine cheese. Yes, it's definitely uh, protein filled. Excellent. So, phyllo pastry, we've all seen it before, we've all used it before. The, um, the dish that I'm using is uh, suited to a sheet of phyllo pastry folded in half, which is kind of convenient really. So, butter in half, butter. Another sheet of pastry, more butter, and fold it over. Could you do olive oil, Chef Ricky? Uh, you, you could do olive oil, you could do um, trusty olive oil spray. Um, but I was following the, tradi the traditional recipe. Spray the bowl and trim the pastry to fit. So, that's our first layer of pastry in the bowl, and then a generous layer of filling. Now, other things you could add to this filling, you could add roasted garlic, you could add caramelised onions, you could add freshly snipped herbs, thyme, rosemary, that would be good. And a good way to add more uh, nutrients too, and antioxidants in the herbs, you know, you can really jam pack it full of flavour. Yeah. And garlic too, so good for you, and perfect pairing with um, white bread cheese. I think some roasted garlic in it would be lovely. Mm. Any herbs in particular you think would go well with this type of flavour? Uh, I'd like I'd like to see some rosemary or some sage in there. Or, 
pa parsley would be good. But parsley is good in almost anything, really. Okay, another layer of pastry, another layer of filling. And as you said before, spinach would be another way to up the antioxidant level. Going for those really dark, dark green, sort of really, really nutritious herbs and, and dark leafy greens. You know, forget about cod lettuce, just chuck in like the spinach and the rocket and radicchio, anything really strong and full of flavour. Or some steamed silver bit. Yeah, beautiful. Um, another layer of pastry. So filo pastry can be a bit fiddly, but I see you being quite confident with it there and not having any dramas. Do you have any tips for us? Treat it mean. What's that say? Treat it mean. Treat it mean. Be confident. Okay, now you can see that I've trimmed the pastry to fit my bowl. And at this stage I'm going to keep the, the good square for the top and I'm going to use the offcuts to fill up the dish. You can also do one with the, uh, we've got cheese and chai dip. And another layer of filling. A little bit of bacon to it. The corn, we've got a corn relish. And pop the top on. Okay, in the oven, 180, 170, 180, maybe 35, 40 minutes. When it's cooked, it's, it, it puffs a little from the air. It looks really just like a baked quiche. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand this on to Phil. He's gonna pop out and put it in the oven for me. Thanks, Phil. Okay, so let's get rid of all of this. So you could serve that with a, a nice side salad, perhaps? I think a crisp green salad is quite the right accompaniment for that dish. And it's got a pretty good nutrient profile. You know, you've got the protein, as we said, from the eggs and the dairy, um, and, you know, a bit of carbohydrates in the flour in the pastry. Um, yeah, bingo. And then the eggs. Cheers, and come back this. Okay. So this one is Thank a spinach, pine nut and hickory dough dip. We're always done this Okay, so watermelon salad. Drain the spaghetti off. New tray, new dish. Very simple. All the work's been done by someone else. Diced watermelon. In the Incredibly pot. high in lycopene. Very good. And a little bit more... White brine cheese. Add as much as you like. I think that's a fairly good ratio. Uh, olives. I've used black olives. Uh, I think the colour contrast really is what we're looking for. I do think split green Spanish olives could be good as well. But the black olives are far more startling. Now, thanks to Nigella, because I've got an aversion to onion, I really actually don't like it very much, but I've, this is soaked overnight in lime juice, and, you know, I think the colour and the texture, yes, um, but again, I would, use it, I would use it a little bit sparingly. And then, uh, fresh mint, so just a scattering of mint through, some pepper, no salt in there. I think that you'll find the white, the white brine cheese and the olives to be salty enough. And a good slope of olive oil. And fresh lime. And if you put lime or any sort of citrus over a dish, it actually lowers the GI of it, so it'll be absorbed slower in, in your body. Good, 
Um, very, very simple, really. Great for a summer's day. And you're right, it looks gorgeous. The, the colours and the textures. I think the contrast of the uh, the fresh melon with the saltiness of the white bright teeth and the olives works very, very well. Yeah, salads don't have to be boring. Often I see clients come to me and they're scared to add like a little bit of cheese to the salad, but it adds so much flavour and good nutrients too, you know, good healthy fats and protein. So a little goes a long way and it adds such a beautiful flavour. It does, it does. Cheese in salads, parmesan, goat's cheese, white brine cheese. So that's our watermelon and white brine cheese salad. Cheers, thank you. Okay, next we're making a quiche. So you could groan and say, that's not very hard. Um, I haven't made quiche for ages. Um, and I was surprised when I made it the other day. It was lovely, it came out of the oven, looked lovely, reminded me of all of the reasons why we still eat quiche. So, plantain lined with pastry. My pastry is homemade. You can buy it in the supermarket if you want. Uh, very simple, I think we all know the drill. Eggs. Still can't do one-handed egg crack. Just have to practice more, hey? More practice. Cream. Seasoning. A little grated fresh nutmeg. Whip it all together. Really, quiche is such a quick thing to make. Like, if you're still determined to to cook at home, which I, I certainly am, um, you know, how lovely to produce something like this family meal in such a short space of time. This is the cash caval cheese, which you can see over there. It's kind of, it's hard to compare to anything that we know. Uh, it's not a Swiss style, it's not really a cheddar style. It's really quite unique. Uh, it has a lovely flavour. Um, so the mushrooms that we sauteed before, here's some I did earlier. Um, generously, mushrooms, the cash caval. So it's a really great sort of Sunday lunch type of meal, isn't it? I think absolutely Sunday lunch. And again, really, really simple on the table, a good green salad. What, what and people are often scared of using like cream and things like that, but if you have a, you know, a modest portion and then you serve it with a big salad, and if you've got these great, really nutritious foods like mushrooms in the quiche, you know, it's a way for you to be eating all these great nutrients. So it's okay. But also, also Heidi, when there are plenty of ingredients in the quiche itself, the eggs and cream are really only just holding it together. Yeah, exactly. Perfect, I love that. Um, and uh, so I, I, I have put the cash caval in the bottom, um, but from a baking aspect, a little bit, of, a little bit of cheese on top uh, just finishes the tart uh, with a lovely golden brown hue. Um, and the cheese is a melting cheese. 
Uh, I haven't tried it on uh, toasted pita with tomato, but that's where it's heading next at my place. Um, so, again, generously, cheese on top so we can bake it and it'll come back all golden brown. Come on, Phil, pay attention. I feel like that and the white brown cheese would make a pretty epic grilled cheese sandwich. I think it would make a very epic grilled cheese sandwich. I think the cash caval also into a risotto, perhaps, um, or uh, through a pasta, simple pasta, broccoli, cherry, tomatoes, that kind of thing. And for our final dish, uh, rhubarb. So I stewed some rhubarb earlier. It's been stewed with uh, some brown sugar, some apples, uh, and stewed quite generously uh, until both fruit have uh, quite quite broken down. I mean, you can. I have made this dish before and left the apple or the pear uh, less cooked, so there's more texture. But you know, this is this is aimed at a breakfast dish. It's not a dessert, um, and the the crunch and the texture in this is coming from the granola. Um, the rhubarb's been stewed, as I said, with brown brown sugar and lemon juice, and also some cinnamon stick and some star anise, which are lovely, lovely uh, flavourings for uh, any fruit, any cooked fruit, really. Um, so very simple. I need a spoon. This is my homemade granola. Um, you really, you could, you could do it in any way you, ch you choose. You don't have to. There are no, there are no rules around things like this. But um, I think to create a, a, a layered effect is pretty. And yogurt's a great way to start the morning. You know, it's really. A nutrition, pretty nutritionally complete food. You've got the protein, um, heaps of B vitamins and calcium. So things that we often lack in our diet or struggle to get enough of, um, and it's filling, full of those good um, probiotics or healthy bacteria as well, which we'll talk about if you want to come back to the next session. It's it's filling, Emma, but it's also quite light to eat. So very very simple, but on Sunday morning, that Oops, and a couple of, couple of good coffees, that's what I'm looking for. So it's a pretty simple thing you could do, but I, I mean it looks beautiful and very impressive to guests as good. well. Very simple, very really so easy. <laughs> So is the yogurt quite tart? The yogurt is quite tart. The um, it, it it is. It's it's quite it's quite fresh. So there are no rules. Layer it up as you wish. So, um, they're, they're the dishes that we have to show you today. In a moment we're going to uh, start passing some food around for you. And um, is, the, is the banista ready yet? Just feel while you're in there, could you bring back the baked quiche and the banista please? Um, any questions? Speaking of banista, just to hold back one moment, I just want to show our um, cooked dishes first. Um, we will, we'll just be a minute. Any questions? Any questions? Anyone hungry? I hope so. Sorry? Um, is there any? You know what? Is there a recipe? Um, there are a lot of ingredients. Uh, oh, Phil! 
Yeah. 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 Yahoo! Okay, so is that hot? <laughs> oh, right. Best, best you put it down there. Um, thank you. Here you go. Do you need this for the quiche? Yes, thank you. No worries. Um, no, no, I didn't. And, um, yeah, if, it was, if I was going to make a dessert tart, uh, I would be more inclined to bake the base. Um, but with a quiche, generally, you can find a hot spot in the oven. I know in my oven at home, the base. What is that? Um, quiche, quiche, I don't know, it's just a quiche tends to respond to... It's very quick. It's a very good oven. <laughs> um, so, it is warm. Yeah, it's golden brown, delicious. And the banista, yeah, I think it's, I think it's an interesting dish. Um, the granola, uh, email me. I'll see if I can find the recipe. Uh, it's pretty yummy, um, and there are lots of recipes out there. This one's made with the, all of the bits are baked with um, maple syrup, and unfortunately a little bit of vegetable oil. Um, but there are lots of recipes out there. I know when I was Googling around, and then I added things like um, uh, um, pistachios and figs, um, so I kind of, yeah, I made it a bit more luxurious, basically. And there was a question as to whether there was fiber in the granola or muesli, and indeed, yeah, in the oats and in the nuts. Yeah. You just, can always add bran just, just after. Be, just because it's been baked with a little bit of vegetable oil and maple syrup doesn't mean it's bad for you. Yeah, and you can always mix up the oils. I mean, I, mean, I use olive oil that works quite well. Yeah. yeah. Even though it's got a stronger flavor. Well, you could use a light olive oil. Um, I think we're ready to eat, really. Shall we have some banista? No, 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 I'm fine, fine, thank you. Um, so this is the banista coming around now. You can see that it's been baked in a larger, shallow tray. Um, it's a very, very simple and delicious finger food item to, um, to present. And something you can do ahead of time. Something you can do ahead of time. I'm just gonna have some. So ladies and gentlemen, head on over to Chris's Lips. We're doing a tasting of a slow protein.